Alright, let's get sat down over here. Yikes, get settled in. Uh, that's nice. I got a top 10 today, Jerry tells me. What is it? Top 10 Liliana of the Veils in Standard or something like that? We'll see. Oh no, it's <laughs> top 10 Urza's Legacy cards? You sure? You sure you're going to let me do this? Okay, that's. <laughs> I'm not going to complain too much. All right, I can see why, actually, because, you know, Brothers War is coming out in the next six weeks or something, so there's probably a renewed interest in what exactly Urza's Legacy even is. So what better way to find out than by looking at Urza's Legacy? This is a neat set with a lot of cool history in it. It's famously the first set with foils in it, right? And... There's a cornucopia of cool cards for competitive, casual, commander, and cube players alike. It's a lot of alliteration, I feel like the professor. But yeah, I feel like right about now this would be, as the kids say, a cool one for both older and newer players alike. Whether you played way back then somehow, like me, there's not many of us left, and you just forgot half the cards we're going to talk about today. Or you're a newer player, by which I mean someone who started playing in the last 23 years and you've never seen most of these cards. There's going to be a lot of cool info in this video to reminisce over or to start ordering some cards for your commander decks. So let's take a look today at the top 10 Urza's Legacy cards to buy right now. And I'm your favorite magic channel, favorite magic channel. Best believe that the professor go bananas for my deck text. I come correct like a porn star slicing up all these other suckers with my sword mark. And we're back. Now I gotta go ahead and get something out of the way before we actually start the list. And that's because there's gonna be multiple lists within a list in this video. We're gonna play a few games of Shazarhad. Shaharazad? But with lists. Instead of games of magic, right? So the first list I have to talk about is the reserved list today because there's a there's nine there's nine Urza's Legacy cards on the reserve list and I could easily be like hey uh top 10 Urza's Legacy cards these nine cards plus another card I really like all right see you in the next video I'm not gonna do that I feel like it would be very easy just to come up here and list reserve list cards and that be my whole list so instead I'm just gonna run through everything in this set that is on the on the reserve list so that you have that information but I'm going to focus on some stuff that's a little less well-known for the real list here. So, you know, there's some pretty famous stuff in the set <laughs> on the reserve list, like Deranged Hermit, Grim Monolith, which is like the most expensive card in the entire set. Palancron, which untaps a bunch of land, so it's kind of good. <laughs> Memory Jar is an infamous card in Magic History at this point. Second Chance gives you extra turns, so it's probably worth a little bit of something. Radiant Archangel is actually relatively cheap, and it's a fun little commander if there's a lot of flyers at the table. And speaking of good commanders, Multani Maro Sorcerer is even less expensive than Radiant, and it gets huge in pretty much every game of commander you can play. But the two cheapest cards on the reserve list in this set are easily Ring of Gix and the other one, <laughs> Weather Seed Tree Folk. I should have remembered that, but both of these are under a buck right now. So if you want like an Icy Manipulator for less, but ultimately more <laughs> than an Icy, or if you just want like a five power beater that doesn't die, you could do worse than either one of these in your commander decks. But again, we're here to shine a light today on some cards that maybe aren't as famous <laughs> from this set. So let's do that. Like for instance, the honorable mention embodies that. We're going to talk about um artifact stuff is what I have written down right here on the list. Uh, that's stuff that would go good in like an artifact focused commander deck or if you're building a cube that cares about artifacts. I don't know what you're doing. You know, magic players are very different. But either way, there's stuff like Joyra's Toolbox. You get to play a card with Joyra's name in it. And it's actually not that bad. Regenerates artifact guys for reasonably cheap. It's not terrible in your artifact focus deck. Same thing with Beast of Burden. This is a colorless creature that gets freaking enormous, and it's only like 50 cents to pick up a copy of this right now, and it actually looks pretty good. Uh, by the way, I said pick up a copy, but it came out like pick a tatati. But anyway, you could also get my favorite of these, which is Scrap Heap. I completely forgot this card existed, but there's probably a cross section somewhere where you're playing like a life gang deck that has a lot of artifacts and enchantments in it. So if you're playing like Trellisara or some other commander that cares about gaining life, and you're also playing some sort of egg strategy, or just constantly cracking small, cheap artifacts or whatever. Then again, maybe there's some intersection at which Scrap Heap can be like a really important card in a deck like that. So I wanted to bring it up. This is actually kind of neat. Speaking of neat artifacts, number 10 is Thran Weaponry. Now, this is kind of cool, considering it gives all creatures plus two, plus two, the entire table. So this is kind of neat from a politics angle because, you know, you could say, you could say, <laughs> there's a temptation, I think, to say that, oh, well, all of your opponents... There's three of them, at least, on a commander table. So all your opponent do is going to get plus two, plus two. They're going to come for you. You're going to die before you even get to swing in with your plus two, plus two guys or whatever. You know, it could happen. It could happen. But I think, 
I think that a lot of people at the commander table are going to be happy that all their guys get plus two, plus two, so they're not going to be too keen on taking you out anytime soon. Meanwhile, all your guys get plus two, plus two. Now, of course, you can also shut this off whenever you want to, whenever you feel like maybe it's it's not a good thing that everybody else with all the creatures has gets plus two, plus two, and you, with no creatures, don't. You know, just shut it down. It's fine. Just shut it down. Whatever. But, so that's kind of a neat thing about it, too. I think this card works in some interesting ways where you can play... You know, some creatures with regenerate or maybe some indestructible creatures, something like that, <laughs> right? And then you can wipe the board so you really don't care if all creatures get plus two, plus two, because your guys are the only ones that survived. There's some cool stuff about this, and it's only like 10 cents <laughs> right now, which is actually kind of amazing for a thing that literally any deck can play that is a double anthem effect for all your dudes and everybody else's, but all your dudes is the important part. And my number nine is Vyashino Heretic. I vaguely remember playing this guy a little bit back in the day, although he was never really important in standard. He was seen as too slow back then, but now we have some formats that people really like to play that are typically slower to develop. Things like Commander and Cube. And in Cube, this guy's really good at controlling all the high cost and powerful artifacts that tend to be in those environments. And did it with Commander. He's really good at controlling all the high cost, important, powerful artifacts that tend to hit the table every other turn in that format. So this guy not only just like taps to destroy artifacts, he doesn't even sacrifice. Seems like he kind of should. He just taps. <laughs> you basically pay a little bit of mana, but whatever. You tap him, you bust up whatever you want, and you get to face the opponent. You know, if you blew up like a four-cost artifact, you get to take 10% of their life total away in Commander. That's not nothing. So this guy is actually worth a second look nowadays. Easy. Number eight is Angel's Trumpet. There's a few artifacts on this list, if you can't tell, but this thing is actually really neat. This is another one that I remember looking at back in the day, but not really having enough magic knowledge to do anything with. But now Nowadays, I feel like there's plenty you could do with this just by combining it with effects that make it difficult for the opponent to attack, whether it's propaganda for X or if you can actually afford a moat. Either way, if you have plenty of ways in magic of making sure opponents can't attack, so this is just going to do a lot of damage to a few different opponents as the game goes on. And again, this could be a centerpiece to a very specific <laughs> kind of deck, but a very fun deck to play nonetheless. And pretty much any color combination can fit an Angel's Trumpet, so there's a lot of different ways you could make this work. And if nothing else, it just gives everything vigilance. Even without the second line of text, it's kind of an interesting effect to just globally give vigilance and see how that screws the game up. So Angel's Trumpet's a neat one, and you can get it for like under a buck right now. It's worth experimenting with. Now, for number seven, let me just preface this by saying that something that a lot of Commander players look for, and I have built multiple aristocrat-like, you know, sacrifice-themed commander decks for the channel, so this is something I'm always looking for, is free sacrifice outlets. I don't want to pay any mana for my sacrifice outlet. I want it to be free. And I want it to be good, right? So, you know, Woe Strider, for instance, is like a baseline for this. That's a decent free three-mana sack outlet. But you know a really, really good one? Like, a, a fan, just a fantastically good one is Martyr's Cause. Three mana, sacrifice creature, Prevent damage. That's actually not bad at all. You know, obviously you're going to be using this on your opponent's turns a good bit, but that's fine. Aristocrats decks need something to proc their aristocrats, trigger their aristocrats effects, their sacrifice stuff on opponent's turns and not just their own. But there's plenty of reasons you might want to use this on your turn too. But either way, this is a nice little thing, whether you're in sort of a fog commander kind of deck, you know, a group hug commander kind of deck where you just don't want to take damage and you have a bunch of tokens to sack or whatever. There's a lot of different uses for this, again, whether it's aristocrats or numerous other strategies. So I just want you to know this card exists too. It's a little under a dollar right now, and I think that's actually a really good price for a free sack outlet that actually does something really good when you do sacrifice something to it. Now, number six is for the Timmies. Let's look at Quicksilver Amulet. <laughs> this is one that I know I've heard the name of this card a million times. Like, I know that, that Quicksilver Amulet has crossed my ears a lot, but I couldn't really call to mind what it did. So when I was looking through Ursa's Legacy for this video, I was like, oh, this is a Quicksilver Amulet. Yeah, this does look tempting. <laughs> this looks very good from a certain perspective. That perspective being very much Timmy. <laughs> but I'm still a Timmy at heart in a lot of ways. And just being able to pay some mana and throw whatever 10 mana dude on the table that I want to still sounds like a pretty fun proposition, especially considering this is an artifact. Again, a number of those in the list. But <laughs> just about any deck can play this thing and throw whatever fat boy they want to, or girl, onto the table at any time they wish. And honestly, that's a bit of an investment. It's a bit of an investment, but it's less of an investment 
than paying nine mana for a creature. So <laughs> there's still something about Quicksilver Amulet that's super tempting to me all these years later. I will never stop being who I am. Number number five, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do uh, two entries. But that's because I really couldn't decide. Between two enchantments that don't do similar things necessarily, but they both grant keyword abilities. I think that both Knighthood and Levitation are pretty sweet cards. Now, Levitation has been printed uh, out the wazoo. Again, as the kids say, as the children say, out the wazoo. Um, <laughs> I don't know if a child has said out the wazoo in like 35 years. but Anyway, this card has been printed a lot, and you can get a lot of copies of it, but... But did you know that right now there's a seller on TCG Player that has multiple copies of foil levitation from Legacy for less than $4? <laughs> Not a whole lot of foils you can get from the set for less than 4 bucks. Again, it's the first set with foils. So foils tend to be fairly scarce and very expensive from this set. And a foil levitation is not a bad deal for less than four bucks, but the one from Urza's Legacy still looks the best foil or not, in my opinion. But that said, even though levitation is obviously good, you know, all your guys get flying and commanders, fine. Combine that with Radiant Archangel. But Knighthood is kind of good too. I mean, it's one mana less for three at three mana, and giving all your dudes first strike is like always going to be better than it might look on paper, right? First strike is kind of a busted ability, um, which is should be known by anyone who's ever played with a creature that has first strike. Uh, how often does the first strike on that guy come up? Every single combat phase. And so <laughs> giving all your dudes first strike is actually kind of a big game. So both of these are kind of attractive cards in the current commander marketplace. And again, if you're into cubing, these are good cards to have too. Number four is Karmic Guide. Now, this one has been printed a lot in various, you know, Commander and Modern Horizon sets and stuff like that. But again, the prettiest one is still the one from Legacy, and it's still relatively cheap. It's one of the more expensive cards that's actually on the list, but I should tell you something considering you can get a copy of it for uh, $2.50 <laughs> right now. But if you've never seen Karmic Guide somehow, somehow... First of all, uh, we're, welcome to Magic the Gathering. And <laughs> second of all, um, you should play it, shouldn't you? I mean, just playing the card in general for five mana is like paying, like playing a five mana reanimation spell, right? But this one comes on a body that also has flying and random protection from black. <laughs> it's just nice. So like the body is kind of good in and of itself, but getting a body attached to a reanimation spell is incredible, especially when you start blinking it or flickering it or returning it to your hand and playing it again to returning it from your graveyard. Because, you know, you reanimate your karmic guide and you just, it reanimates something else. So, like, karmic guide is just this super slick card that we don't see enough of in, you know, mono white nowadays. <laughs> Cards like this. I guess we did get Invoke Justice, but, you know, it seems like for a while there, Wizards just forgot that White can also reanimate things, and this is one of the better White cards to ever do that. Now, you might notice that we're supposed to be in the top three, but there's still a pretty decent runtime in this video. Why is that? It's because it's time for everyone's favorite. It's time for the coffee break, ladies and gentlemen. Coffee break! I'm going to try to get a theme together. I should probably just play, like, Bossa Nova over the coffee break. We'll figure it out. We'll get it together, because this is going to... This is going to be a thing that I think I'm going to do from now on, because you guys tend to like it. But look, this here's the thing with the coffee break this time around. I'm probably never going to, sadly, <laughs> never going to get to do a whole video about Urza's Legacy ever again. And even though I want to highlight a bunch of stuff that doesn't get enough love from this set, there are a bunch of cards in this set that I could not get away with not at least mentioning. Like, I taught ta so many cards in this set that I want to at least mention, uh, whether it's for a uh, point... <laughs> so people in the comment section will be like, well, what about Rancor? There, I mentioned Rancor. Yeah, it's a good, it's a very good card. Uh, Rancor is, is still a thing that exists both in real life and my nightmares. <laughs> I played Magic back then, so stuff like that. What else might I be talking about? Mother of Runes, pick up a copy of that. It protects your commander in white. You probably want to play that. Tinker, can't play it in commander, but it's a card that, um, probably the <laughs> most important card competitively from this set at a time, at least, was Tinker. So there's that. Cloud of Fairies, that's a fun card. This also untaps lands, but Palancron costs a million mana, and this only costs two. So it's <laughs> Cloud of Fairies is actually pretty sweet. Unearth goes in many a commander deck, and I shouldn't have to tell you that. Uh, creature lands, right? Fairy Conclave, Treetop Village, blah, blah, blah. Those are the two best, but there's others in the set. If you don't have these yet, again, 
Look at the little yellow border around the text box. They just they look really good in Urza's Legacy. Get them from Urza's Legacy. They're not that expensive. Uh, Damping Engine exists, but I shouldn't tell you this card exists if you don't already know, because it's actually pure evil, and you will be kicked out of the card store for trying to play a Damping Engine. Uh, as soon as it hits the board, you're, you're gone. Uh, aside from that, Fleeting Image is in this. This is where we hit the stuff that if you're building a cube, I think it's kind of <laughs> like an old-school, low-powered cube. I'm doing that. Our next video is going to be about that, just so you know. Can't wait to do that one. I really... God, I can't. <sighs> We're doing this video right now, though. <laughs> but anyway, Fleeting Image is actually kind of a neat little... It's been on screen long enough that you've read it while I'm doing my bit. Fog of Gnats is a Will of the Wisp that costs one more, but also has a point of power, which Will of the Wisp doesn't have, so it's worth bringing up. Thornwind Fairies is a prodigal sorcerer that flies. That's kind of neat. Multani's Acolyte. This is actually an important card in pre-modern right now, but it's been an important card in standard before, too. It's just a two-minute thing that draws you a card when it ETBs, so it's playable. Uh, also, last couple of things. If you want to spend some money on a card from this set, No Mercy is like... 40 bucks, you can get a copy of it for $30 moderately played right now, which I suggest doing. And it's good. Have you read the text box yet? Have you been impressed by this text box yet? It's uh, very good, but it's way too expensive to make the actual list. And finally, uh, Walking Sponge. Well, SpongeBob is actually surprisingly good in your cube. <laughs> Surprising. I'm telling you, try it in Commander even. You, Walking Sponge, look at that art. You get to play this card. Just try it. If you put it in your deck, that means you get to play it. But anyway, uh, back to the actual list. That was such a long interlude, and I apologize. But number three is Crawl Space. Now, this is the most expensive card on the actual list. You can get a Crawl Space moderately played for like 11 bucks right now, and I actually think that's worth being on the list. This slows things down to, pun intended, let's be honest, a crawl in terms of people attacking you. But this will probably put a target on you to where you'll get attacked by six whole things every turn cycle. But, you know, that might be worth it if someone was going to attack you with six things anyway, <laughs> just by themselves, right? So Crawl Space is a card that doesn't really get brought up too often, and it's not on the reserve list or anything like that. But there is a reason why it's 10, 11 bucks right now on the low end. And that's because it's a really, really good card for Commander that I'm afraid not too many people know exists. This is right up there in terms of jerk with the card like Damping Engine, but I felt like it was slightly less jerky than Damping Engine. So it's on the list. By the way, combine this with Angel's Trumpet. I just want to throw that out there. You combine it with Angel's Trumpet, Maybe stuff can't attack, so Trumpet does more. Anyway, number two <laughs> is Phyrexian Reclamation. Now, you can get a copy of this right now. For like three bucks, five on the high end, market price is six. And I think that's worth it for most decks that play black and also play creatures <laughs> in all of Commander. I mean, seriously, this doesn't just have to be in the Aristocrats decks. It doesn't just have to be in decks that have a few important creatures that they need to have on the table in order to do the thing they're trying to do. This can just be in like normal decks, you know, that have like 30 creatures in them or whatever, 25 creatures. Uh, because it turns out that paying a couple life is not really a big deal. It's not a huge deal, especially in Commander where you have twice the life, you know. This is like paying one life in a normal game of Magic. So getting anything you want back and just throw it in your hand, that's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous what this card can actually do. So I know that a number of Commander players are already familiar with this card, but just in case you're not, you need to... And yeah, I know, we talked about this card in the Judith Commander deck that we did. Like a few weeks back. Go look at that deck if you haven't looked at it yet. It's worth looking at. <laughs> but this is one of the, that's one of the decks that turned me back on to how good this card was. And it certainly is. Try it out. But number one, um, I am cheating. <laughs> I'm cheating for number one because these are two cards that have very similar mechanics. They both work in pretty much the exact same way. But they do, 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 do. They do very different things. So let's look next. And for number one, at Impending Disaster, and Planar Collapse. Now, <laughs> Impending Disaster is probably the jerkiest card on the entire list. It really is. <laughs> you know, this basically destroys all lands. But just a couple mana, just a, f just a few mana, you destroy all the lands. <laughs> you know? Which is pretty ridiculous to be able to play effectively Armageddon. Uh, in red, that's a, without having to play like Jockle Hops or some other six mana thing, you know. Destroy all lands, uh, pretty easily. And did you know this card existed? I would imagine that 80 something percent of the people watching the video did not know this card existed. <laughs> 
<laughs> it does. Destroy all lands. But if you want to be a little bit less of a jerk, but still pay a really low rate for your board wipe, you can try Planar Collapse, you know? The problem with both of these is they give all your opponents a chance to take them out before it gets back around to your turn. But, you know, if you do get back around to your turn, you're paying a very low amount of mana to do really broken stuff. Just very, just, come on, man. Destroy all creatures for two mana? Well, come on. <laughs> that is worth, you know, all... One dollar and fifty cents. You're gonna pay for it right now in terms of planar collapse. The market price on collapse is like four fifty, but pretty much everyone that's selling a copy of it moderately played is selling it for a buck fifty or two dollars or a little less. So, you know, two dollars for a rat, a two mana rat. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're daring everybody to kill you within the next turn cycle, and they probably will try. But still, two mana rats are worth a little bit of stress <laughs> some of the time, and. You know, board wipes, or not board wipes, but, you know, land Armageddon's at this rate are, uh, I don't think it's too controversial to say that that's worth a look, too. So, in case you uh, haven't been acquainted with either of these cards here, that's pretty much all I got for this one, except for a couple of outliers, like Crawl Space is like 10 bucks or whatever. Most of these cards today were less than a dollar. Less than $2 in pretty much all cases, save for one or two. So there's a lot of really affordable stuff from Urza's Legacy right now that, again, I think is worth taking a look at. There's a lot of shippers that'll give you free shipping as long as you order, you know, $5 or more worth of stuff. So there's plenty of ways that you could order, you know, like six of these things. <laughs> <laughs> pay free shipping and only pay like five or six dollars and get some really good stuff from this set. You know, I feel like especially when it comes to older sets, for instance, one of the one of the sets that was in the Twitter poll as to, you know, what y'all even wanted to see, what sets y'all wanted to see. One of the sets that I put in there was Legends. I had somebody reply back and said, well, Legends has expensive cards in it. And I don't want to see a list that has expensive cards. That makes plenty of sense. But honestly, even if I did a Legends list... Most of the cards wouldn't be that expensive because that's the way I like to do lists, right? With Urza's Legacy, I feel like there's that same apprehension with some players. Ah, oh, it's a really, it's a much older set. There's reserve list cards in that set. There's powerful cards in that set, like Grimonolith and stuff. So, you know, is it really even worth looking at? Yes, it turns out, you know, you can get plenty of really good cards in this thing for under a dollar. So I hope that I was able to shed some light on some of those today and, you know, feel like it, go over to TCG Player or, you know, whatever, and <laughs> put in Urza's Legacy and just see what's in this set. See what pops out at you because there's some really good stuff in here for really cheap that could be great in multiple Commander decks. Or again, in a cube, you know, there's a lot of sort of mid to lower power level stuff that feels extremely fair and feels very old school. So I've been building an old school like 94 to 99 cube lately. And our, again, our next video is going to be about that. It's been my best magic experience in the last like five years easily. I've had a lot of fun building the cube and I hope that I can translate that into a video that's fun to watch. <laughs> so make sure you're subscribed for cube content and we will get back to standard very soon. Next time we talk Talk about standard. We're going to be talking about the top five overperformers and underperformers in this format right now. So again, lots of reasons to sub -sub, to sub sub <laughs> to subscribe. If you haven't done it yet, please do it. Do I have to beg? I'm not. I don't feel like it, but I will. Uh, but sub, sub if you haven't done it yet. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Let me know what Urza's Legacy cards I didn't talk about down there in the comments section that you think deserve. You know, we're getting a little spotlight here and there. You know, every now and again, every card needs a little bit of talking about. But anyway, let me know down there and uh, do all the other stuff. Head on over to Patreon. That's why we're doing this video in the first place is the patrons wanted to see it. So if you want to vote on what we even do here on the channel, then it's just a buck a month to do that. And it really helps out a lot. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. And you can watch me play some magic at twitch.tv slash SPMTGDev. We have some fun there too, obviously. But in any case, I am donezo for this one -zo. So I'll catch you cats later. I'm Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, wizards. Spread love and be kind. Oh, I forgot to talk about Avalanche Riders.